Let's evaluate the integral of x cubed plus 6 over x minus 1 with respect to x here. Now this is a rational function, x cubed plus x over x minus 1. So in order to find the antiderivative, what we want to do is use the technique of partial fraction decomposition to rewrite this rational function as a sum of simpler partial fractions. Now the first step in a partial fraction decomposition is to check whether the rational function is proper or improper. And so this is by analog what we mean with, uh, uh, with integer fractions, right? If you took the fraction, for example, seven halves, this is typically what one means by an improper fraction. Uh, the numerator, seven, is larger than the denominator. So it's an improper fraction. We could write this as a mixed number, right? How does one do that? Well, if you're not sure what to do, you always turn this into a division problem, right? Uh, seven over two. Uh, how many times does two divide into seven? Well, uh, six is a multiple there. You get three. Subtract them. You get one. That's your remainder. So seven divided by two is three remainder one. What that means is you get three and one half if you write this as a mixed number, uh, which of course three and one half the notation is kind of weird because you put the thing side by side, it almost seems like it's multiplication. Really, it's addition. It's three plus one half. Uh, one could do a similar thing for rational functions as well. So this right here is an example of an improper rational function. The numerator is bigger than the denominator. And what I mean by that is the exponents, right? The numerator is a degree three polynomial. The denominator is degree one. Degree three is bigger than one. So what we want to do is we want to write this as a mixed as a mixed number or the equivalent of that is we want some type of mixed polynomial. So we want to write this with a whole number part, which the whole number part uh, in this case will be a polynomial. And then over here, the fraction part is going to be a rational function, but it's going to be a proper rational function where the numerator is smaller than the denominator. And how do we accomplish this? Well, we have to do long division of polynomials. Let's, let's remind ourselves how we do that. We're going to take x cubed plus x and divide it by x minus 1, like, like so. So analyzing the leading terms, we have this x cubed and this x. We have to ask ourselves, how many times does x divide into x cubed? Or thinking of the ratio x cubed divided by x. That simplifies just to be an x squared. And that's what we're going to record on the top of our... Frac uh, our quotient bar right here. So x divides into x cubed x squared times. So we record that on the top. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to times the x minus 1 by x squared. So x squared times x minus 1. That gives us x cubed minus x squared. And so we're going to record that over here. x cubed minus x squared. And now we have to subtract. This is mimicking exactly what we did over here, right? We're, we looked for the biggest multiple of 2 that goes into 7. That was 2 times 3, which is 6. We then subtract that from the dividend. Um, and so we see here, if you take x cubed minus x cubed, those will cancel out. The leading term should always cancel out here. You're going to take 0x squared minus minus x squared. Make sure this negative sign distributes onto the whole thing. Um, so that's actually going to be a positive x squared. And then bring down the next term, which we get an x. In this situation, there's no multiple digits. But if we had multi-digits over here, you would bring the term down and repeat the process. Uh, so now we ask ourselves, how many times does x divide into x squared? That happens x times. And so we record that on the top. Plus x right there. Next, we have to take x times it by our divisor. And so we get x times x minus 1. That's going to be x squared minus x. And we record that below here, x squared minus x. Then we subtract it. Make sure you subtract it from the whole thing right here. x squared minus x squared. The leading term, if you chose it correctly, should always cancel out. Then we're going to get an x minus negative x. So it's actually a 2x. Um, there's no terms to bring down, which really just means you're going to bring in a zero right here. Give myself a little bit of space. And we repeat this process one more time. All right. Uh, 2x divided by x is going to be a 2. So we write that on the very top. That's our quotient. Uh, 2, 
we then have to take 2 times x minus 1. 2 times x minus 1. That gives us 2x minus 2. Bring that down here. 2x minus 2. Subtract it. Make sure you subtract the whole thing. The 2x's should cancel. And you're left with 0 minus a negative 2, uh, which is going to be a positive 2 right here. And this is going to be our remainder term. So it took us a while here, but x cubed plus x divided by x minus 1 uh, turned out to be this thing right here. x squared plus x plus 2 with the remainder 2. So what does that mean for us? Uh, let's see how much space I here have at the top. I'll erase some of these things right here. So what we now can see is that, um, well, actually, I'll just have to bring it down. It's too crowded there. Uh, so what we've seen is the following. We saw that through the long division we just did there, the, and I'll bring it so it's on the screen again, so we can see what we're doing here. So we've seen that the rational function x cubed plus x over x minus 1, this will then become, you have the whole number part, which is the quotient x squared plus x plus 2. Think of this as a mixed number, you have the whole number part, then we have a proper fraction. Well, that fractions will have the same denominator we started off with, which is x minus 1. But now the numerator will be the remainder, which is 2. So x cubed plus x divided by x minus 1 is the same thing as x squared plus x plus 2 plus 2 over x minus 1. And so in terms of integrals, if we integrate this with respect to x, we integrate this with respect to x, we can then break up the second part into its pieces. So we have the integral of a polynomial. Integral antiderivatives of polynomials are pretty nice, pretty simple. So we're going to love that. But then look at the rational function we have here. You have 2 over x minus 1. I'm going to take the 2 out, and we're left with just x minus 1. Um, this one, just a basic u substitution, saves the day. Take u to be x minus 1. Take du to be just dx. And then therefore, this integral has the form, the integral of du over u. It's antiderivative is the natural log of u plus a constant. Uh, don't forget the absolute value as well. And so applying this to the whole thing, uh, we take the antiderivative of the polynomial. We get x cubed over 3 plus x squared over 2 plus 2x. And then we're going to end up with, for the second part, 2 times the natural log of x minus 1, absolute value of x minus 1. Don't forget the absolute value, plus a constant right there. And so we can find an antiderivative when we take the long division of the polynomials. Uh, in this situation here. And so the advice I'll give you is if whenever you have a improper rational function, uh, find the find the quote unquote mixed polynomial, find the quotient and the remainder using long division. Now in this situation, since the denominator was x minus one, you could have gotten away with a, a simpler technique called synthetic division, which I'm not going to demonstrate right here. Uh, but that, that, that applies in some special situations. Most likely you'll have to use long division, which is why I wanted to use it here. So with the improper rational function, use long division to find the quotient and the remainder, and then integrate the quotient and remainder separately, and that'll give you the antiderivative there. Um, now, the issue is that the remainder is going to be a proper fraction. And so in this situation, it wasn't so complicated. But we'll see in the next videos, what do you do when the, when the proper fraction is a little bit more complicated than just having a linear denominator? Stay tuned.